Right, welcome back to 59 Minutes. My guest is here, and C, uh, youth leader, that's a man in National Congress, Fred Muka. Yes. Good morning, and we're karibu. Good morning. Uh, to us. First of all, my apologies for coming late. Yeah, we understand. Hey. Mombasa Road, they're doing Mombasa things. Road is, uh, hey. but they, it's okay. they're doing things at several places. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. well, thank God I'm here. Thank God you're here, finally. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about BBI and um, uh, unpacking the BBI. It's been a discussion now for... Uh, for some time. Yes. We saw what happened at Bomas. Uh, they really set the ball rolling. There were some people of divergent opinion. There was even some bit of heckling when the deputy president was speaking. And I think where we are right now, if you look at the headlines today, uh, Nation, The Standard, The Star, they're all talking about how uh, the, the president yesterday, and we want to have some clips of that, and and uh, the right one, Raborela Odinga, Wai Naivasha, yes. talking to MPs, basically urging them to get on board and uh, make sure that this thing goes through the process and, and, and is passed. And uh, yeah, there you see in there, and it was actually quite yes. uh, uh, interesting because it, the members of the press, like myself, were not called to that thing, but <laughs> some of these clips to Mepata Chinyamaj. You see, the president the, is done in the, odium regalia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, yeah. even the camaraderie between them <laughs> was, 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 was quite something. Yes, yes. And uh, there, there seems to be a suggestion that there is no room for discussion and it's all systems go. First of all, what, what is the take of, uh, of ANC? And is there room for discussion? Do you think there's room for discussion here? Well... Uh, from where I sit, we sat together as NC. Mm -hmm. Before this uh, BBI was launched on a Monday, mm -hmm. we sat together the whole Sunday as NC. We had our legal team taking us through the challenges, the changes that has happened in the BBI report, and how we are supposed now to tackle it going forward. We agreed that uh, we were with the BBI from the onset. From mm -hmm. the inception, we've supported BBI. So this was not the time to Backstab. This is not the time to, 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 to retreat or go mm -hmm. back. However, we noticed that two or three things were not quite in order. And uh, we asked that if there was room so that the president should not lock it completely down yeah. and the, the, the former prime minister, they should open an, a window for, for, for more divergent opinions to, to air their views. Because uh, if you realize, uh, BBI had a process that they were to traverse the entire country. Yeah. They technically traversed at least three quarters of the country. They did not go to, to the North Rift. Uh -huh. Neither did they go to, 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 to Nakuru. They had plans to go in Eldoret and Nakuru. The last three rallies didn't happen. Uh -huh. Nakuru, Eldoret, and uh, finally Nairobi. The two rallies, the three didn't happen. But as NC, we said, since you cannot kill uh, a child at birth, we will support BBI. However, we had asked the president for room, uh, a window of opportunity so that we can also engage two or three issues, which we saw that they are very, uh, they needed some, some, some panel meeting. Mm -hmm. An issue like the Senate, issues to do with women, legislative issues to do with women is done in the August House, in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So taking women rep, scrapping off women rep, and bringing women to the Senate is actually killing the, the entire idea to empower women. In the Senate, people are discussing about devolution, about revenue allocation. Uh -huh. we, are not, we are not legislating issues to do, to do with women. Issue to do with the ombudsman. That, uh, uh, for a layman's language, a person in Sotiku does not understand the term ombudsman, I'm a yona tukwa. TV kwa gazeti. Ombudsman technically, that's a prefect to the, to the judiciary. Yes. There's a person that is supposed to say Maraga has done wrong. Yes. You cannot have a prefect to the judiciary appointed by the president. We had suggested as ANC that one be a reserve to the Judicial Service Commission. Issues to do with the making the Senate and the upper house. That was a dream that has been long overdue. We've yearned for it. Issues to do with representation. We feel that, uh, I saw it, but initially the standard newspaper had run. I don't know where they, they, they brought, the, they came up with the figures, 
on how the 70 extra constitu constituencies will be will be distributed, will be, arrived at, uh. will be arrived at. But yesterday, from what I got from the, the Na Na Naivasha, it is totally different from what the Standard newspaper had run. Uh -huh. Even the, 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 the distribution of the 70 seats, uh, technically, in a way, I don't find it viable, reasonable, how a constituency like Juja will have two MPs. That's what technically what you're hiding to. Yeah, so that's where we are as a party. So that's where, uh, at least you see some, some kinks. But there seems to be, like, may, maybe no room for discussion. They say the BBI went round, uh, guys took, uh, every party presented its, uh, its views on the, on the document, including your party. Uh, we presented our views as a yes, document. So, uh, as a youth, also, we presented our views, although the, the meeting at uh, KICC yeah. <laughs> turned chaotic. But there was a meeting uh, at KCC where the youth from different entities of political parties mm -hmm. were to air their views about BBI. It turned chaotic. There is a concern amongst some uh, members of uh, Wanainchi that uh, we are burning bridges more than we are building bridges. If you look at uh, what's happening, there seems to be two distinct thoughts and approaches to how to go about uh, the, the BBI and two different camps for that matter. Uh, and one is from the deputy president's camp and the other one is from uh, the Raila and uh, Uhuru camp. But before even I say much, let me just play what the deputy president had to say yesterday concerning uh, the matter of camps and uh, differences of opinion and then we pick it up from there. Let us find a mechanism for building consensus. Let us find a, a mechanism that unifies the country. We cannot build consensus by creating factions. We cannot build consensus, or we cannot build unity using divisive means. It's possible for us to agree on the matters that require legislation, they be dealt with. On the matters that are administrative, they be finalized. On matters that are constitutional, let us find a consensus on all the issues, whether it is the judiciary, whether it's the IBC, on the Senate, on devolution, on representation. Let us have a reasonable debate. Let us have a debate on ideas, on issues. Let us not personalize. Let us not uh, uh, criminalize any opinion and let us see how we can build uh, the country together uh, going, going forward. And I think we will all be respectful to what has been said about building consensus and about reasoning together if we can find the mechanism and the place when all of us can, can come together. Uh, it's not necessary to divide the country. It's not necessary to divide to create unnecessary division. And uh, whatever it is, you know, in this uh, scenario, there could be those who are looking for how to make money from the referendum. I want to advise them, there are many tenders they can apply so that they can make money. <laughs> Let them leave this constitutional making as a Kenyan process. There are those who think they can use this for politics. Let them wait for 2022, we will all do politics. For now, let us find a mechanism for this constitutional moment so that, and bring all Kenyans together. The politics aside, business aside, we can, we can move the country forward. Right, um, uh, very uh, uh, huh. uh, somber words from the deputy president. But that's not what we have been seeing on the ground. When people go to the ground, it's, it's a bit different in terms of the rhetoric they have, uh, some of your lieutenants and some of the guys on the other side. And uh, do, does that give hope that perhaps we will find consensus for this BBI? Love him or hate him, the deputy president, as you speak today, is the Raila Odinga of 2006. The deputy president of today is the Raila Odinga of 2012, prior to 2013. 
Oh. The deputy president today is the Raila Odinga of 2015. He is fitting exactly the same shoes Raila Odinga was before. And uh, they say, show me your friends and I will tell you who you are. Oh. As much as we respect the deputy president, I have nothing, I have no personal vendetta against the deputy president. However, I feel in a way that uh, he's a master of double standards today. The deputy president today comes out strongly to support the BBI process, comes up with the re re reconciliatory tone to support the BBI process, uh -huh. comes up with, with, with the tone to unite the country. Yeah, he said, come, let's reason together. Today. Over the weekend, the deputy president will be in a rally, who will be calling Raila Odinga, Mutu Abitendawili, Namuganga, a magician. Uh -huh. The deputy president will be calling the president by his words, you can be, you, he will not mention automatically, but he will say, Mimi Sim Levi Bwana. He is referring to the president. The deputy president should be brave enough today to bring unity as he purports to bring unity today. If there's a person that is bringing division in the country from where I sit, in my own personal views, I know the views of the party, know the views of this, this, this honorable station, the person that can bring reconciliatory return to the country is the deputy president. Because uh, uh, people like Rigadi Gashagwa, his close buddies, as we speak today, Rigadi Gashagwa stands up in front of the deputy president and says that he will never attend a meeting where the president and the de and, and right honorable Raila Omolo Odinga sits together. To him, they see Raila Odinga as a, as a, as a, as a magician, the, the president has met them, as, as Muganga, uh, as Satan. Oh. That's the way the, the, the deputy president has baptized his followers and supporters to believe Raila Odinga is. There are those people who believe in Raila Odinga politics. To them, Raila Odinga is everything. Raila Odinga will tell them to attend a rally on a Monday at 2, at noon and they will be in there. Nairobi. <laughs> they will be there without any facilitation, uh -huh. and they will be there. It's quite a number. If you follow statistics from 2013, from 2017, let's assume that there was no rigging. The way Raila has made us believe there was rigging. Let's assume there was no rigging. But there's a constant figure that I all, has always supported Raila Odinga. That's equivalent to 44% of the voters of this country. So, and these are people, if you insult Raila Odinga, you have insulted them by their heart. So I would wish the deputy president also tones down in his in his speech when he addresses the public, let him stop insulting the, 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 the ODM uh, leader. Let him also exercise, exercise uh, reconciliatory tone with him. He is an elder. We come from the village. You are born and raised in the village. An elder is an elder. You agree with him or not, uh -huh. you cannot go ahead and start insulting an elder. An elder is an elder. Raila Odinga has mentored uh, William Ruto. They were together in the same party. William Ruto supported Raila Odinga. We accept that. However, he should also be, 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 be welcoming to an elder. Leave alone the 2022 politics aside. Yeah. One of the things he said at, uh, at uh, BOMAS was that he also speaks for a lot of people who uh, are not being heard. He speaks for the Mama Boga, for True. the Boda Boda Rider, for the... Uh, uh, for the person. And, and if you look at the, the, the country, when we speak about the hustler narrative, it has really taken root amongst some of the youth. And you, as a, uh, as a youth leader, when you look at that particular narrative, and then it's applied to issues like the BBI and say, look, the youth are looking for opportunity. They are looking for empowerment. They are looking for uh, uh, a place where they can uh, be, be recognized in the national scheme of things. What um, does it, res uh, does it, uh, is it an argument that resonates with you as a young person? Uh, they have, but they have not. It is, it is an elaborate plan. It's an argument that resonates with everyone in this country. Uh, however, bringing it up in a political atmosphere to have the haves versus the have not war, that's the war that you'll never wish to admire to have in a country. Because uh, there are some people, uh, to be sincere, even to get money to buy a newspaper, 
can only come once in a year. Mm. The people have been born and raised in both spheres. I was born and raised in a, in, in a low end area. I'm a person that has cooked mandazis in a ghetto to get my college fee. Here in South Bim, Kurukwanjenga, I used to cook mandazi in the morning and in the evening to raise my college fee. I am indeed a hustler. I, 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 I know what it takes. I know what it takes to. I stayed with my mother mid 90s, early mm -hmm. 90s there. In Kawangware, my mother used to wash clothes for, for, for people. And my mother, at some point when we were waiting for dinner, we used to have a jiko in Kawangware. Somebody stole our jiko. When somebody stole our jiko to Kabaki, my mom went to a nearby shop and brought a soda and, uh, and mandazi. That's what I ate for supper. Mm -hmm. She slept without anything. These things are there in the life. However, when you bring that approach in a political angle and uh, want now to divide people uh, between the rich and the poor, the truth of the matter is that we are very, we live in a, in, in a country where the late J, who is called the Jandarwa MP. Yeah, the, the JM. JM Karaoke. Mm, we live that. in a country where we have 10 billionaires and 10 million beggars that the country we live in. Mm. William Ruto does not belong in the Hustler Nation, although he speaks for the Hustler Nation as he, he, he speaks today. Yeah. He says it's small, la lafaka kuja ju. It is true. Uh, yeah. William Ruto started small, but William Ruto at college in the University of Nairobi, he was sitting on the same table with Biot and Moy. Somebody, a youth that sits on the same table with Biot and Moy is not a hustler. He may have sold chicken, yes, but he left hustlership from 20 years downwards. I am definite by 24 years, William Ruto, in the YK92, he had made a million shillings. He asked like, at 24 years, uh, one million shillings. Yeah. At 24 years, somebody who could be able to drive. So, Ndoto. Ndoto. I, I admire, I honestly admire William Ruto. He, he is a team player. If you see William Ruto in 1992, he is a team player. He played for Kanu. When he joined ODM in 2005, he is a team player because even Uru Kenyatta went back to Kanu. William Ruto did not go back to Kanu. He said, we have left that door, we are here. He fought for Raila Odinga to the man. Mm -hmm. Even everybody thought it is the end. William Ruto stood with, William, with Uru Kenyatta when it was unfashionable to have a Kikuyu president, then another Kikuyu president. It was unfashionable. But William Ruto stood with Uru Kenyatta. William Ruto is a team player. We have to appreciate that. However, creating a narrative of the house but as I have not I am against that idea it's dangerous you think it is very dangerous for the country because uh, people live in every up and area in this town in Karen we have Kibira in Mudaiga we have Madare in Langata we have Kibira there in every high end area uh -huh. there's an up South blooming. B we have Mukuru wow. South B we have Mukuru South C we have Mukuru Kwanjenga we have an up blooming, uh, a bigger population in the ghetto so if these people in the ghetto will be annoyed to come and tackle head on the people in the up market will be without a country. We should be leaders that will be able to tell the people who are low end areas to help them believe in the in the passion of their dream, to be the bridge of their current promiscuous state to their golden foreseeable tomorrow. We should be leaders that will create that opportunities, not a leader that will separate and tell them that. The person that makes you suffer today, the person that makes you sell eggs for a living, is that person that stays in Runda. Mm. But Muka, what is the problem with us really? Because, um, you know, from where we look at, we will say, will the BBI really change that? I mean, we clamored for a new constitution. The new constitution came. It didn't change really the, the, the livelihoods of people as such. Here we are. We are clamoring for a bit of a change. At what point will changes really occur to us economically? to uplift uh, you know, those that are really down, even to a, a, a level where uh, they can have some sense of humanity and dignity and put some food on the table. In, uh, in our presentation as youth in KCC, we presented the health issue. I'm happy it was captured. Among all things, it was captured. Uh, BBI will not change the livelihood of the people. Mm. Neither will the changes that William Ruto wants to bring on board will bring changes to the lives of the people. Neither will the William Ruto presidency, the Raila Odinga presidency, the Musalia Mudavadi presidency will change the livelihood of the people. 
what can change the livelihood of our country today is people trusting the, the bodies we've put in place, like the anti-corruption board. If we could be able to stop corruption in this country. Oh. And not just trusting, them working. Working. If we could be able to, to yeah. trust and let the anti-corruption body work, the police force work, the high education laws board work, the bodies we've entrusted to, 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 to foresee this, if we could be able to trust them and change our mentality. Today, if uh, you had a candidate in class eight or form four, today, you are given the duty to print exams. Uh -huh. Do you know we print do you know we print our our KCP or KCC exams abroad? If you are given a duty to print KCP or KCC, in this country we have printers for the country. Will you will your kid pass or fail the exam? You are given that, that contract. Your kid will pass. <laughs> that's the mentality in this that, country. That, that's corrupt. That's like crazy. That's yeah, the mentality is, in this yes, country. Yes, yes. So the mindset of these people, we should mm. come up with a way. Uh, TZ, I love the, the Tanzanians print their own ballot papers. Mm -hmm. Tanzanians print their own exams. There's a mentality. But look at Tanzania. We just, they just came from an election where we, there's a lot of hue and cry as to how they conducted uh, Previously, we've had a very good regime in Tanzania. I think Magufuli has come to, to, to mess things up. I don't know, but we'll see how it goes forward. But I don't support his chest thumping. He's, he's even interfering with the media freedom. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. he's doing M7. But all things considered, if, if corruption is our biggest uh, uh, problem, because that's what really, when you look at it, and, you are and uh, even from the way you're speaking, at the center of all that stuff, it's mm. just that it's corruption that has stopped even development. In this, everybody in this so, country, a bigger yeah. percentage of Kenyans are corrupt. Bigger percentage. It's not only the deputy president or the president or the, the executive. The bigger percentage, I've given you a very good example. If you are given a mandate to print exams, leave alone printing, carrying exams, you are being given the mandate to carry exams from point A or point B, mm. and you have a candidate in class 8. You are candidate, you are, 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 That's the mentality in this country that needs to be changed. I don't know how we'll change it, but that is the problem that ails this country. It's not the, the, the executive, it is the mindset of our people. Yeah, mm. and the mindset might not change even with documents, as you say. Yes. Now, back to, so, back to BBI. Uh, we are talking about timelines. BBI as it is now, with the timelines, with what I heard yesterday, what, what I saw uh, from uh, a person I admire so much, a person that can go for a campaign, for an election, and be elected even without a single poster, <laughs> James Orengo. I think these people are determined. Come rain, come sun. BBI must pass. And they're determined. This country where people even don't trust the electoral system, this BBI will pass. However, what is passing? That should that be That is the discussed. question. What is passing? Yes, because it seems uh, they, they, this talk that there are those who, do, who wanted to go untouched. And you see, the president has taken a personal initiative yes. in, in handling this matter. And so has, uh, you know, his uh, brother Raila Odinga. I mean, they are personally involved in the trenches to make pushing this thing hands on hands on they made, they made sure you know they changed the leadership in parliament they did not remove duale because duale was unable to perform his duties but they removed Duale because duale was an obstacle for bbi all these things in parliament in senate were being changed to 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 to, to prepare way for bbi and uh, if by the legal uh, explanation from our ANC team is to go by anything, the Senate or the Parliament's decision on this BBI will not determine if the BBI will go to the referendum or not. They'll just debate about it. The determinant is the 24 counties, and they'll deliver 24 counties. Hmm. Yes. There are things there, like, you know, the issues about the wage bill. That they, uh, what's your position uh, uh, yourself on that? Because there are arguments, if you looked at the Punguza Mizigo bill, mm. uh, that sought to you know, reduce 
a lot of that wage bill, reduce even the number of representation, reduce even the number of, um, of uh, constituencies and scrap positions like women rep all together, reduce the number of MCAs. It was all about reduce, reduce, reduce. This one seems to be about add and include more. Add the executive, add you know, uh, you know the members of parliament. Uh, it almost reminds you of the Mwaikibaki government of of national unity. Are those things important? Is it that important for me to have somebody from my place to sit in the in, in a position somewhere? Are we really there in 2020 that we say so that we can make it top heavy the executive? Having someone from your place sitting in a high-end office does not guarantee change of your lifestyle. True. Most people who have suffered in this Uhuruto government, 2013, 2022, 10 years, most people who have suffered are the Kikuyus. Most people that have benefited much are still the Kikuyus and the Kalenjins. They are the people that have suffered the most and the people that have benefited the most. So the entire idea that having one of our own in leadership circles mm. does not actually add up. Well, there are things that we may agree that are important. Having a leader of official opposition in parliament, having a funded office, that one we have to agree. It is important because uh, you can imagine Having a, a, a presidency without somebody superseding, uh, without somebody mm. uh, checks, uh, che checks che and balances, checks and balances mm. of the presidency, uh, that is not quite in order. And uh, that office being funded by the taxpayers' money, I doubt if anybody can have a problem with that in the country. That's something that we should agree on. Uh, expanding the executive, having a prime minister and uh, two deputy prime ministers. To me, it's debatable. Because uh, the way it is structured in the BBI, in my personal view, it is not quite in order. Because uh, now what the role of the deputy president? If I was given an ear to give my personal views, mm -hmm. I will make the deputy president the head of government business. The deputy president be the head of government, government business. We no longer need a prime minister nor a deputy prime minister. Now, they say in BBI they want a deputy prime minister, a prime minister to sit in parliament, the two deputies to sit in parliament. Mm -hmm. We will not have a majority leader in parliament, now we will have a minority leader in parliament. What of the Senate? Do we retain a minority leader in the Senate? Or now what picking order? Does one prime minister sit in Senate and the other in, 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 in parliament? There are some issues that need to be debated, true. However, the window of opportunity for changes in the BBI is gone. Uh, we have to accept this document the way it is. There are only, there are only two options. Either accept it the way, they, the way it is, make amendments, see what can go to, 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 to the people. I am sure the final document that will, not, will go to the people is not what we read. Mm. They will have to change and uh, remove issues that may, may bring mayhem and this confusion of spirits. Right. But uh, all in all about inclusion, uh, in a way I also blame uh, the deputy president because uh, his, his brigade, his team, as people were supporting BBI from the onset he came out to oppose BBI, by the president's address in Bomas, he said that he had consulted the deputy president, the deputy president helped him come up with the list of the Akinahaj and team. Yeah, those who say he threw him under the bus, basically. That's what the, the, the president said. Mm -hmm. By their body language, it was true. There's a body language, the, because he laughed at it. Though the body language might be true. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since he did not support the BBA process from the onset, he is supporting it now. The time where people are giving views, people like Murkomen and Moses Kuria were making roadside shows they could, like in Meru, they walked out from BBI process and walked out with a sizable number of people uh -huh. to show the might that uh, we no longer need this BBI. BBI had a term called nobody can stop reggae. I don't know where that came from, but the deputy president has been up and down, always castigating and say that that reggae must stop. 
to him is opposing the BBI. I think this is a great opportunity. Uh, we can never have a referendum why we don't have a yes or no. We must have a yes or no. Uh, I urge him to create a no brigade, lead the no brigade, finance the no campaign, let the president and Raila Odinga support the yes brigade. Let's go to the people. However, I also find it tricky because uh, this is a game of cards. It's mm -hmm. like a game of chess. Mm -hmm. The president or uh, the Raila Odinga and the president team, since they may not be supporting uh, Ruto's presidency in 2022, they may want him to spend his money on the no campaign. He may not have money by 2022 because it's just after a year. And burn out. And burn out. Never well, <laughs> we, are, we are out of time. Yes. To those young people who are watching mm. and uh, uh, have not uh, entirely grasped this matter, what would you tell them uh, this morning? What would be your message as a youth leader to the young people in this country? As much as they say, Jisome, Jiamulie, uh, Kenyans are bad readers. Even this newspaper, <laughs> Kenyans are bad readers. <laughs> even it, this newspaper. It's true. It's true. People, there are very few of us who even read the newspaper. Kenyans are bad readers. People read sports yeah. and politics a bit. People mm. not read hard things like, uh, like, like the stock exchange. Yeah. People not even go through Or it. the commentaries. Or the commentaries. People not go through <laughs> it. So, but I urge you to read. Given an opportunity, try as much as possible to read, understand it, and uh, see, is it a worthy journey? Is it a journey that we have to, to pass through? If it's okay with you, vote yes. If it's no, vote no. But uh, the future belongs to those people who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Right. Yeah. I like that challenge too, to mm. read this morning. It's a, it's a good challenge. We, need, we all need to read a little bit more. It's very helpful. Yes. Uh, before we go, the U.S. election is today. Biden or Trump? My money is on Biden, Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Biden and <laughs> the lawyer girl called Hamada. <laughs> and and Hamala. Hamada is the lawyer. <laughs> right. <laughs> we are going to end it on that note. Uh, Fred Muka, NC uh, Youth Leader, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you coming. The Rudy Ten. Yeah. That's thank 59 you. minutes for today. Join the lawsuit uh, with Leah coming up shortly. And do have a blessed day. Bye bye, picture we don't see it at Kandugule, excuse the tune in. Hello, in Baghdad, boy. Hello, you need to do that? I'm in Zaloon, I'm in Zalaza, I'm in Ziyog, in Baghdad, I'm in Jabba Jabi Zume. So briefly, I'm not in Yabdeda now in Baghdad because I'm very disorganized. Tell me. I'm not in Zaloon, I'm in Ziyog, I'm in Zaloon. Eh, what's that in there? Exactly. Imagine Billy, I'm in Zaloon, I'm in Zaloon, I'm in Baghdad. Yeah. Five hundred, five hundred. Eli Bugazan's yoke. Nima, you might have died. Only Tuesday. So anyway.